Offal and off cuts of meat have long been part of traditional Filipino cooking, and once you get over kind of like that gory, bloody factor, they're usually cheaper and develop a ton of flavors. Today we'll be making three dishes that are part of my favorite using these off cuts, which are pork tiniguan, chicharron bulaklak, and we'll be making a Batanga style goto, rounding up our menu of the dead. All right, so it's four in the morning. Time to get our meat from the Marikina market. Hi, miss. Can I have 1.25 kilos? I know, top of this. Lungs. 200 grams of lungs. Yes, miss. I'm not going to go. I'm going to go. Can I get um conte lang mga 300 grams lang? Thank you. Salamat. Back in the kitchen, we're about to start the prep of everything. It's really important to make sure that you clean them properly and soak them properly. So we're gonna start off with the kidneys here. These have been cleaned pretty well already. I'm just gonna remove this white part and then we're gonna chop them up kind of like the size of a button mushroom. We're making a chicharron bulaklak using the pork intestines. Usually it's called ruffle fat. I'm not 100% sure that this is the one that actually looks like a flower, which is why it's called bulaklak, but we'll try it out. The suki at the market basically said that it was. After that, we will be making a batanga style goto. It's actually more of a soup that then is served with white rice. And then finally, one of the favorite dishes here in the Philippines that I actually really enjoy eating is a pork niguan, which is a pork belly stew with a little bit of blood and some sugar. It sounds weird, but it comes together in this really thick, dark sauce that is absolutely delicious. So this is the first time I'll kind of experiment with everything. So if I get things wrong, Please be nice to me. Pork intestines, we really don't need to do much. We'll just leave it as is for now. Got my beef tripe. As you can see, it's a little dirty. So all I have to do is kind of scrape most of these parts off. So I can do that with a really small parry knife. Now the number one kind of technique in terms of cleaning innards is just um, either soaking it with some vinegar and some salt, or for example, with tripes, the best way to do it is rub it in salt, rub it in vinegar, rinse it, do it again, repeat, repeat, repeat until it's cleaned. It's actually much easier with a big knife. You know, it's funny, given the prices that currently are surging in the market for fruits and vegetables, all the pork and beef innards were actually cheaper than the vegetables that we bought. I'm just gonna chop this up into big pieces first, just to make them a bit more manageable. And the other ingredient I have for the goto is the beef lung. It's kind of very fluffy. It has this texture that's very strange, but when used properly, it's a great addition. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove like these blood vessels that you have here. So I'm just gonna chop this up as well. So the pork diniguan is the actual only dish that I can cook right away. The blood for the diniguan is the only thing I really kind of need to quote unquote prep. <laughs> it sounds so wrong. I need about 300 milliliters, so we're almost there. Two tablespoons of vinegar into the blood, and then we're gonna keep it. This is really just used at the last part of the dish. What I'm gonna do is chop up this pork belly. So now I have a little bit of color on the pork. In go the onions, sweat those out a little bit, and I'm gonna add my garlic. For the ginger, I prefer not to chop it up because I don't want pieces of ginger in my mouth. So I'm gonna cut them in like long tranches so that we can fish them out eventually after while you're eating it. Once I've got a nice color, I'm gonna use a nice organic fermented nipa vinegar. That goes straight into the pork. And then I'm gonna let that vinegar, kind of that acidity dissipate a little bit so it gets a little less aggressive. And then we're gonna add in some water. So I'm just gonna leave this simmer for about 30 minutes or until the pork is nice and soft. This has been bubbling away for about 20 minutes now. Just a little bit of seasoning. 
one half tablespoon of fish sauce. So now that that's cooking away and building that flavor nicely, we're just gonna go ahead and clean all our innards, put everything in a strainer, wash it down with some water, continuously do that until I get something nice and clean. Pork fat is rendered completely of this deep, dark color that looks absolutely beautiful. Add in two tablespoons of brown sugar, and then finally I'm gonna add in the pork blood, which I've strained already. A bit more patis to flavor the nguan. And I forgot to mention, if you realize that things have moved around, it's because we have a moving table and we needed to get this top shot. So yeah, we do things a little differently here. Finishing touch for the nguan, green chili peppers. Our intestines are ready, so I'm gonna let them rest and cool down a little bit while my oil is getting up to about 330 Fahrenheit, more or less. But it's really important to note that ye much is gonna be used for our Batanga style goto. And I think I was right a while ago, I think this is what you would call bituca, which is just the intestines, but not necessarily that flowery um, part of the intestine. I just basically listened to the suki because I had no idea what it looked like. But this works as well. We can make chicharron bituca. So I strained it as much as I could. I'm gonna flatten it now and run a paper towel on it just to kind of absorb some of that leftover mixture. We're then gonna cut these up into small pieces and then we're gonna slowly place them into the deep fryer. This is gonna take about maybe 15 minutes to cook so we're not looking for like a really quick deep fry. Some people at this point would actually season it with more salt, but my water was already really well seasoned, so I don't think I need it. And just like that, our first dish is ready. That color, and it's silky, and I think that's for me is the most important. Look at how beautiful that looks. And obviously, Dinuguan is nothing without puto, and we're so lucky that Marikina is known for having some of the best kakanin in Metro Manila. So good, so bright. Like the vinegar really cuts through the blood, but the blood gives it this amazing texture. Now, puto, some sauce. I'm happy, man, I'm happy. If you served this to anyone and told them there was no blood in it, they would have no idea there's blood in it. It's just people need to get over that kind of gory factor. Our first fry is done, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just leave that to the side here just to cool it down for a little bit. As you can probably hear, this is already quite crispy, but we're gonna fry it again just for good measure. We're gonna finish off our Batangas Goto. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of meat here, remove most of the fat, and just kind of just slice that quite thinly. Garlic, onions, ginger go into my pan. Really quickly just sweat that out. The beef is gonna cook really fast because it's nice and chopped. And we're gonna do the same thing with all our entrails here. You can cut the tripe a little thicker if you want. I've seen this done in the province. They just take a massive cleaver and kind of go I don't have a cleaver yet. Well, I used to, I broke it. Toss in my beef first. When you've got some nice browning on the beef, toss in all these innards. Cook this down for about five minutes. Our chicharron bituca looks like it's ready to go. Now we just have to let this cool down a little bit. Put it on a piece of paper just to absorb all that extra oil. With the Batangas Goto, a little bit of vinegar, cook all that down a little bit. At this point, you can add machuete through the form of water. And my secret weapon is I use that same oil and preserve some garlic, caramelized beautiful garlic and some chili oil with some machuete. And that's gonna just give us so much flavor. That stays together for about five minutes. So this smells absolutely fantastic. It's not a smell that you would necessarily think would come from somebody in this because there's just so many guts in here. I'm gonna finish it off with some broth. So I'm gonna let that simmer just for about five to 10 minutes. So we're gonna finish the bituca with a little bit of salt. It's already quite salty. Transfer it to our bowl here. It always has these like really gnarly shapes. And I hate to use this word, but it's juicy inside. Like, it's juicy and crunchy, but delicious. Extremely fatty, like it really coats your mouth. Get over the fact that it looks the way it looks and you might actually enjoy it. The soup is pretty much done. This, when served with white rice, is so good. Unfortunately, we forgot to buy white rice. Don't hate me. Let's try to get a bit of everything in here, right? So let's have some lungs, some kidney, some beef, and some intestines in one bite. The lung is nice and tender. The brightness of the vinegar comes through all that really kind of strong off, you know, 
gamey flavor. The annatta just rounds it up nicely in that garlic sauce with a bit of spice kind of for me, turned it upside down a little bit, which is a great thing. If I'm not mistaken, the lung is the one that kind of has that livery flavor. It's a good dish. So we finished about three dishes in a total of about five hours. Don't want to work anymore. I just want to kind of sit back and enjoy watching some TV. And if you guys kind of didn't realize the theme we were playing around with during the whole video, and we really try to do it faithfully because I'm a huge fan of the show, you can actually stream the new season, old episodes, or old seasons if you want to binge watch The Walking Dead on Fox Plus. And that's what I'm gonna do right now.